Uh, hey guys, what's up? We're here with a Blu-ray DVD merch collection update. This stuff is stuff I've accumulated over the last about month or so. It's one of those situations where I'll randomly purchase something or something I pre-ordered will come out and it will just happen to come out when I have no money, when I have no spare cash to get anything else and I don't want to do just a collection update video for this one item. So I have to wait uh, for a little bit. Um, for more stuff to come out uh, that I've pre-ordered or stuff like that or just when chant when I chance upon something that's really interesting so um I guess I'll start with blu-rays and DVDs first title I got is a release from vinegar syndrome this one's limited to 2,000 copies uh, 2,500 copies I'm really happy I've got this it's the Andy Milligan double feature seeds and vapors uh, now, Andy Milligan is not a very good director at all. Uh, I love his films, and I have his, this little, like, triple feature release of The Body Beneath, Guru the Mad Monk, and The Ghastly Ones, which, um, Guru the Mad Monk and The Ghastly Ones are, are pretty entertaining, but not a lot of people like Andy Milligan's movies, and it's very understandable why. So... Here is a double feature of his very first film, Vapors, which was a short drama film, um, essentially about uh, the, the lives and struggles of gay men in New York. And then there is Seeds, which is a kind of slasher film he did in the, I think, mid-60s? Late 60s. He did in the late 60s, um, which when, it, when he finished making it, the uh, distributor took the movie and then cut 40 minutes out of it and added 40 minutes of sex to sell it as under the title Seeds of Sin and sell it to porno theaters and uh, it remained as that version for years until Vinegar Syndrome restored the film to its original director's cut and it's pretty it's a pretty 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 solid little flick um, even for Milligan standards and it's also very unintentionally surreal and uh, hypnotic at times. Uh, this release also features um, the alternate um, sexploitation version of Seeds, Seeds of Sin, which is the version that's been released ever on every single version of Seeds that's been released um, up until this Blu-ray. Uh, very, very good release from Vinegar Syndrome. Um, not that I didn't expect it to be a good release, but it's, it's a very good one. Next we got one that I moved, it's one of my favorite movies from this year, Mandy. It's a movie I didn't really cover on my channel because a lot of people were talking about it. I didn't expect a lot of people to be talking about it, but then I rented it and watched it, and um, I was like, oh, uh, you know, a lot of people are saying a lot of things about this movie. Maybe I should not be involved in that just because I feel like I'd be echoing what everybody else has to say about it, which is that Mandy is, is legit a fucking great fun wild ride of a horror film that is slow to start i mean the first hour of the movie like i, I want to say the first about maybe 30 to 40 minutes is is is, is a lot of build-up and um tension and then after that point it, it, the action starts to happen and then after the like hour mark is when the revenge segment of the film starts to happen and this is like one of one of nick cage's best performances I've seen in a, in a while, <laughs> definitely one of my favorite performances of his, um, next to Vampire's Kiss, which is uh, a horror comedy he did in the 80s that is an immensely, uh, is, is, it's an absolutely amazing uh, little bad movie. But this is a legitimately great movie. The director uh, who did this film previously directed a film called Beyond the Black Rainbow, which is uh, a film essentially about... Um, <laughs> A kind of new age healing center uh, holding this girl captive and it turns into a slasher film towards the last like act or so but uh, either way you know it, it, the director's first movie I, I as soon as I just heard he was directing a crazy ass horror movie starring Nick Cage I was like okay well let's watch Beyond the Black Rainbow I've been meaning to watch it and I really like Beyond the Black Rainbow it's very very slow and it's definitely, it, 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 like I've heard people say it has a lot of the problems that Mandy has. I think Mandy really smooths out a lot of the problems. Um, both films are very visually stunning and interesting. Uh, I, I like Mandy a lot more, but Beyond the Black Rainbow is pretty cool. Um, yeah, Mandy, the new Blu-ray of it. That comes with a reversible cover art and the, and the full Cheddar Goblin commercial.
I don't know what to say. Um. Yeah, okay. Uh, next we got the new Todd Sheets film, Bone Hill Road. This is one I kind of bought because it was like 10 bucks on Amazon, and I was like, you know what? I need a little something something, and I just got done watching it, and I've got to say, this movie is 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 not very good and you know by technical definition Todd Sheets isn't a good director but even as somebody who really enjoys like Nightmare Asylum and Dreaming Purple Neon from him um, you know I enjoy some of his shot on video stuff and I enjoyed Dreaming Purple Neon quite a bit and apparently Dreaming Purple Neon was made on a budget of like three thousand dollars this was made on a budget of thirteen thousand dollars and this looks worse and the gore effects are way worse now yes they did get Linnea Quigley in it and I'm sure that that cost them a decent little hunk of money but they could have gone without because I mean they, they're not even like featuring her name on the cover or the poster um she's on the back and uh And yeah, she's listed like on the cast on the on the back, um, but 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 that's not something people look at. Um, not that random people in Walmart would recognize would would look at a cover that says Linnea Quigley and know, oh, that's that's the Scream Queen. But um, I just noticed this. Uh, some of the special makeup effects were done by Joe Castro, and I'm pretty sure that's the same Joe Castro who directed the first Terror Tunes. Um, Actually, the first two Terror Tunes movies. Um, I have no idea what to say. This this movie just this movie just really disappointed me. It really wasn't anything too special or interesting. And um, in all honesty, like the werewolf effects weren't really that good either. They were full on werewolf costumes, and I can appreciate going for practical uh, effects, but. Other than the fact that they were costumes, the mouths of the werewolf didn't move, werewolves didn't move, the, you know, there was no movement other than what you would expect a guy in a werewolf costume to, 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 to do when moving, um, which kind of, uh, just, it, it wasn't even funny in a charming way, it didn't even make me laugh, honestly. I was just kind of disinterested in this film overall, and I'm kind of sad to say that, because I like Todd Sheets' movies, and he's a very cool guy and everything, but this movie is just... Ugh. I, I am looking forward to his new movie, Clown Nato, though. Uh, went out today, picked up a couple things, because, you know, it's payday, and I, I hate myself. Um, I finally upgraded to a Blu-ray of Taxi Driver. Um, for those of you who don't know, Taxi Driver is one of my favorite movies of all time. This is, this movie is legitimately a work of art, I personally think. Um, I got this nice-ass slipcover that, that, uh, I, I think, I don't know if it's in multiple stores, but I know Walmart is doing this right now, where they're doing these VHS kind of slipcovers, and it, honestly, I can completely get behind this artwork, especially when the releases themselves are just the kind of you know, regular Blu-ray releases, I mean, this is, uh, you know, this is like the regular edition of Taxi Driver, this is the regular 40th anniversary Blu-ray of Taxi Driver that I've been meaning to pick up for a while, so to pick it up for, you know, five bucks cheaper than I've been seeing it for for the past year, and to pick it up with this nice VHS, like, slipcover is, is a very nice little bonus as well. Uh, also picked up The Crow. This one was five bucks. Um, yeah, I really like The Crow. This movie is, is a really great little film. Uh, sucks Brandon Lee died in the making of the film. It, it really it really is awful. But uh, this is a great movie. The director of this movie, um, who is it? Alex... Uh, Proyas, I guess. Um, he went on to direct... Dark City, which is another really, which is a great, like, dark science fiction film inspired by Metropolis, and that film, I think, is, like, visually a masterpiece, um, 
I actually think it's a masterpiece of a film overall, but I don't like it as much as I like The Crow. The Crow is more gritty and horror-oriented. And again, VHS slipcover thing with the regular old Blu-ray underneath. And, um... Yeah, The Crow is a movie I, I don't own, so I figured... Um, for five bucks with this cool slipcover, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't say no. I also picked up this for like 15 bucks, it's, it's the Alien Quadrilogy. Now, yes, I already own Alien, Aliens, um, and Prometheus, uh, but I recently looked in my copy of Alien on Blu-ray and realized the disc was missing, so I was like, well, fuck, I've gotta buy a new Blu-ray of Alien. So, um, I figured, since I didn't own, uh, since I've been w needing, I've been saying to myself, like, I've gotta pick up a copy of Alien 3, because I haven't seen it in a while, and, uh, I remember really liking it, and, um, I need it for the collection anyway. I rem I, I, you know, I, rem I keep saying this to myself, and when I saw this in the store, I was like, okay, well, I can kill two birds with one stone, I can get that disc and just put it in my Alien, my Blu-ray of Alien that I already have. And then, you know, get Alien 3, which I've been meaning to get anyway, as well as Alien Resurrection. Not that I would ever watch that, because that movie is trash, but it's the worst Alien movie. And, and I, I'm not even going to argue on that, because uh, Covenant, at least, was, was funny in how awful it was. Fucking Resurrection was just a slap in the face to anybody who even slightly liked three or any of the previous movies in the series um i don't know what else to say i mean it's uh the alien series is a pretty solid series overall like they're only in my personal opinion of the main series including the prometheus and covenant there are only like two bad movies in the series those being covenant and Resurrection. I kind of like Prometheus, honestly, even if it's not very, it's not a perfect movie. But yeah, this was a pretty cheap, um, pretty cheap little release of it. Uh, it's got, like, both versions of all the movies, and I don't need all the special features or anything, because I already own the, the, the special edition Blu-ray of Alien, so I have all those special features. And I don't care about the special features on 3 or Resurrection, but yeah. That's that, that's, that's, uh, the last of the Blu-rays, I think. I could be wrong, but I don't think I am. I'll get into the miscellaneous shit now. Um, when I ordered the Maneater bundle from Severn Films of Anthropophagus and Absurd, which comes with the, you know, double-sided slipcase for both movies, as well as the Anthropophagus plush, and this pin of Joe D'Amato, the director, um... I, I, I was missing the one pin and the t-shirt as well, but I was missing the one pin in, out of the two that I was really, I really, really wanted to get because it's, um, it's a pin I really love the design for and everything, and I didn't see it in there, I thought they just didn't give it to me, and then I saw a note in there that said there were some, um, quality control issues and they would be sending it out, you know, once they get everything ironed out. And they finally sent it out and I finally got it, which is the Anthropophagus pin of him eating his own intestines, which is great. I love, love, love Anthropophagus. Um, I guess I'll fucking go on to this. Uh, bought one of these, uh, kid robot blind boxes. This is just kind of a minor thing I picked up. Um, got, like, I bought this for like 12 bucks, which kid robot figures, the kid robot vinyl figures are actually pretty high quality. Um, and th this is a Treehouse of Horror Simpsons blind box that has some pretty good figures in it. And I was hoping to get the donut-headed Homer, um, you know, or Bart or the fly, or Bart as the fly or whatever, or maybe even Groundskeeper Willie, because the odds of getting, um, the... The odds of getting, like, the, the, the donut-headed Homer are pretty good. It's it's two out of every 20 boxes you have a chance of getting. And, um, not that I'm upset about this, because I did get, actually, one that is a, of a question mark, question mark rarity. But, uh, I got... The one I ended up getting is, uh... One of Trick or Treater Ralph, which... Again, it's a nice little... Nice little high-quality figurine. Well, God, this camera is not good at picking up the actual, like, quality of these figures. But either way, he comes with a little, little, little fucking pumpkin 
trick or treat pail. This one's just, this is just gonna go on the shelf. Gonna go maybe maybe it'll just it'll just sit right here on the fucking um on on the shelf. I do not know, but it was just something quick I picked up and uh, I was like, you know what, I'll throw that in there because why the hell not? Uh, something else, this is a early birthday present from my friend Damon, who he always gets me very nice birthday presents, and not birthday presents, but early Christmas present from my friend Damon, who, again, always gets me very nice things for my birthday and Christmas, and I always get him nice stuff for birthday and Christmas as well. So, um, yeah, the same store that I got that figure in, uh, he was looking around, and he caught, his, and this figure caught his eye, and he bought it. And then he was like, here you go, man, you know, wish me an early Christmas, just right there in the middle of the store. And, um, it is this really awesome, uh, Ash vs. Evil Dead figure, um, you know, in the box, multiple heads, shotgun, the fucking hands, and, uh, even a picture of the classic, um, of the classic Delta, which, it's a very nice, nice figure, um, in the box, sealed, and it's one of the nice, really, it's one of the really nice uh, window boxes that I, I love figures that come in this kind of packaging. The uh, front of the box is lenticular, which is also very, very nice. Very nice little um, present. This was like 30 bucks, which in all honesty isn't bad. Uh, this is probably going to go on, the sh on a shelf somewhere. Um, and finally, the last thing I bought, this is like from the 27th of last month or something like that um i went to a comic shop that is in um where is it like newark newark ohio um and i was looking through because they have these really nice posters there uh that are all already pre-framed in nice frames and they're like 25 bucks a piece and i didn't plan on buying anything but then i saw this poster and i and i was just like okay i've got to get this one and it is it is very very nice uh, Hotline Miami poster, um, which according to the guy in the shop, um, the, all these all the poster all the posters in the shop that are like this are mashups of famous uh, comic book covers and um, video games or movies, TV shows, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Like there was one of Alucard from Castlevania, and it was an old Hellboy cover. Um, you know, there, there, there are ones in there that I definitely recognize because there are some popular, famous comic book covers. But this is a very nice poster, uh, Hot Miami poster, which I don't know what um, comic this is of. This is uh, supposed to be a, a, a kind of copy of, but I don't really care. It's very, very nice. Um, yeah, Hot Miami, one of my favorite video games of all time. And I also have my Richard mask right back there where I'm going to be hanging this sucker. If you actually saw in the background of any of the previous videos, I've had this hanging for uh, quite a while. But yeah, that is uh, it for this update, guys. I kind of wanted to just get this out of the way because I do plan on doing some Black Friday shopping um, on Massacre and Vinegar Syndrome and Severin's website uh, to pick up some titles I'm missing from them. So I'm gonna, you know, wait that out, and I've also ordered some stuff from a guy in a VHS group I'm in who does the bootlegs, uh, who did the, um, where is it? Is that it? Yeah! Who did the, uh, Perfect Blue, um, Blu-ray that I bought, uh, recently. It's, you know, it's just a bootleg, but it's a very nice Blu-ray. Of perfect blue to have, um, as well as the Blu-ray of End of Evangelion. He's got a couple of titles uh, that I have just just ordered today. Um, I'm not going to say what titles they are, but I've got those coming in. I've got stuff that I'm going to order for uh, Black Friday um, from Vinegar and Massacre and Severin. So all that will be in like a huge Black Friday haul that will probably happen in the middle of November, not November, but December. Anyway, guys, I'm starting to ramble. It's Biscuit Boo Horror Reviews, signing off. Peace.